Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian. It's release season here in Kentucky. and We have the latest from the Parker's Heritage Collection out of Heaven Hill, 10 year old cash drink rye. This series was named after late Heaven Hill master distiller Parker Bean, who had passed away as a result of ALS. And so this release, as well as every release since 2013's Promise of Hope, a portion of the proceeds from every bottle is donated to the ALS Association in his honor. Now, in terms of the releases of Parker's over the last couple of years, there's some big shoes to fill. We have last year's double barrel that was outstanding. We've got a series of heavy char finishes from bourbon to rye, as well as wheat whiskey. And these have been really exceptional products. So it's interesting to see a 10 year cash strength product here. It seems a bit simple on paper compared to some of the other releases that we've seen, but there also isn't a whole lot that fits within this portfolio out on the market right now. What are we gonna run into? Let's go ahead and find out. While I have you here, jump down below, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Help me grow the channel here in 2023. Let me know what your favorite Parker's Heritage release has been, or if you haven't tried it, which one you're most looking forward to trying. Let's dive right on into it. Again, this is 10 years old. Cask strength, 64.4%, so 128.8. The 17th edition Parker's Heritage Collection, each across five different rick houses and floors. Mm. Surprisingly, it seems uh, kind of malty on the nose. Honestly, there's like a lot of chocolate, chocolate mousse on the nose. It's like one of the first things that I get. It doesn't really smell at all. It's proof. I don't get a lot of sting. It feels kind of soft actually in the glass. And I've had it opening up for several minutes now. Candied mint, like a brown sugar coated lemon, or maybe like a unsweet iced tea, like a, like a lemon black tea a little bit in there. Not a ton of tannins really, but there's a little bit in there and the, the longer it sits open, the more brown sugar kind of sweetness, kind of this gooey gooey kind of sweetness draws out. Some softer baking spices in here. It's a sweeter leaning nose, which I would expect because I know that Pikesville's uh, kind of a barely legal rye. The nose is malted chocolate, Dutch apple pie, barrel char, orange marmalade and antique leather, tons of orchard fruit. This rye is super viscous, as I believe would be expected from the 128.8 proof. It's still a bit malty. I feel like it's still kind of got some chocolate forwardness. There's definitely more oak present on the palate than there was on the nose, but not as much as I would expect. For it not to be one of the heavy char finishes, it definitely still has some of the heavier charred like barrel char notes that sit right on the tip of the tongue. Big, boisterous, brown sugar, oak kind of amalgamation really fills the palate. Buttery cakiness like a chess pie or something like that. Candy, sugary orchard fruits kind of lingering on the tongue, kind of finishing with some of the pie crust, some dark fruits, plum-like notes, little strawberry-like notes, and really some elegant spices. Great sweetness. I feel like the more you kind of chew on a little bit, it fills the palate. You have some of this peachy nectar, melon-like sweetness come in. And I've noticed those before in MGP Rise, which this is not, but it's no less crushable finding those notes in here. The bigger the sip you take, the more rewarded you are. Huge waves of baking spice, they nip all around. Ginger, nutmeg, cinnamon, pepper a little bit, but maybe a little bit more white pepper. It's nuanced, it's subtle, it's not overly peppery. It's kind of a an interesting weave of spices that that lay on the, the lower end, kind of the foundation of the palate, but only as you take really, really big sips. The kind of chocolate, the kind of Andes mint, thin mint cookie that I, that I mentioned a little bit, the, the mint and chocolate kind of fade away a little bit the more you sip it, and it has a good marriage of, of sweet creaminess, a little bit of citrus, the stone fruits and melon fruits with the oak. They're all intermingled. It's kind of hard to tease them apart, honestly. They're all there, but they're all pretty unison. This is a wild ride. I feel like there's a little bit more citrus and ginger that continue to come out the longer you sip. Still candied, still get some good sugariness to it. It's very robust. I can't get over that. So while I don't think it necessarily has a ton of complexity, there are still a lot of facets to it. I should clarify, it doesn't continue to evolve necessarily and unlock more flavors, but there are still a lot of flavors there to unpack. They're just all happening all at the same time. It's like a good barbecue in the summer. Everyone's there. It's like a nice family reunion. Tons of people are scattered all over the big field and they're all having a good time. This is a bruiser report, very robust, very viscous but I feel like what cards it has to show, it shows them to you right away and you're gonna experience them through the whole entire pour. If anything, the flavors seem to kind of soak in, to seep in, to settle in, and everything just becomes a little bit more saturated. There's really just so much 
to, to sit with here that I feel like, again, while it doesn't have a lot to continue to unpack over time in regards to revealing flavor, it'll take you some time to sort through all the things that it has going on. There's just a, such a, a large amount of flavors kind of going on all simultaneously. For me, I think I'll be most curious to figure out if this opens up and how the flavors continue to change as it opens up and if it draws out some more oak. Personally speaking, 10 years old, I think I kind of wish that it had a little bit more oaky presence to it, although I know that's not everyone's profile. So if you're one who likes kind of the flavors that I mentioned and don't need a ton of oak, this just might be a great pour for you. So again, that is it for the Parker's Heritage 2023 release cash strength ride. Thanks again, everybody, for tuning into another video. I hope it was insightful. hope it was informational. Let me know if you guys have tried Parker's Heritage, whether it's this release or another one. I'd love to hear what your all's thoughts have been down in the comments below. Thanks as always for tuning in, everybody. And until next time, see you all later.